David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have not one, but two pens being offered on a soon-to-be-closing Kickstarter campaign by Enso, made from a material that is new to them, which is ebonite. And the names of the pen, appropriately enough, are the Japanese ebonite fountain pens. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of these two ebonite pens, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about them. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Enso for providing these two pens for review. I've previously reviewed a few pens from Enso. Uh, they are a brand which was established back in 2014 and based in Los Angeles, California. The company name Enso is spelled using all lowercase letters with an accent over the E. Uh, the name is a bit of a play on words, combining the Italian name of Enzo, E-N-Z-O, with the Japanese word Enso, E-N-S-O, which means circle. Uh, the Japanese word refers to a hand-brushed circle which is created with a single brush stroke and a single breath and relates closely to Zen Buddhism. Uh, Zen masters will uh, brush an enzo when doing calligraphy to express the complexities of Buddhism and express a, a moment when the mind is free to let the body create. Or when they're hungry for an everything bagel in an attempt to suck out all of the universe into an infinite void of nothingness. Uh, okay, let's talk about some pens. Uh, as I mentioned, I have two for you. Uh, they arrive in these two different boxes, which here, there's the smaller one, and then there's the larger one. And then we have the two pens. There is what is called the regular size model, and then there is the pocket size. Uh, these pens are made from a high quality, solid matte black Japanese ebonite. Uh, the regular size model is similar in design to another Enso design, the Piuma, and the pocket size is similar to the Piuma pocket fountain pen, which I've previously reviewed as well. For the sake of this review, let's take a look at the regular size model, and then during the writing sample, I'll give you a quick overview of the pocket size. There's a number of uh, good things going on with this pocket pen that you'll want to see. Uh, but in regard to the regular size model, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a nice cigar shape. Um, ebonite isn't the heaviest of materials, so this pen is very light. Um, while it is light, it still feels like it's made of quality materials, uh, which just happen to not weigh that much. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is rounded. Uh, this is a clipless design, and the pen uh, overall has a nice cigar shape, as I said. Uh, there's no exterior branding on this pen at all. Um, I wish that wasn't the case. I've uh, said this before, but I feel that every pen should have something to identify it. Um, I can understand not wanting to have uh, exterior engraving or bands or things like that in order to preserve a, uh, a sleek look to the overall design, but I feel that there are enough other places where you can sneak in some branding, and I feel that that's important. I mean, years from now, if someone finds this pen, there's nothing to really identify it with. And if you're creating a product, um, I don't feel it's a good idea to create a nameless, faceless product that's tough to identify. There needs to be a something to identify your product to build your brand. Uh, the transition from the cap to the barrel is very smooth. Uh, and then the barrel is straight for a bit until it tapers down at the end. And like the top of the cap, it comes to a rounded point. The cap twists off with a single rotation, and underneath we have a number six box stainless steel nib with black lacquered finish. I think it was a good decision to go with the black nib for this pen. I feel it matches the overall aesthetics of the pen well. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. Um, there's also the option to upgrade to a titanium nib at an additional cost, but those nibs don't have the black lacquering. They kind of have more of the uh, traditional titanium nib, uh, almost kind of stonewashed look to them. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a ridge and then angles up until you reach a minimal set of threads and a stair step up to the remainder of the barrel. For me personally, this section is a really good size for me. The thickness is great, and the section itself is long enough that my grip doesn't spill over to the threads or the transition to the barrel. Um, it feels very nice in the hand. 
The cap kind of posts. It will stay on there, but I wouldn't say that it was the most secure. Um, in addition, the cap kind of has a minimal point of contact with the barrel, so if you tap it, it kind of easily becomes dislodged. Um, I know it's hard to see here, but when it's posted, the cap is a bit cockeyed as well. Um, if I recall, the metal Piuma pens aren't postable, so my thinking is that this pen isn't necessarily designed to be posted, but the cap just kind of does by the nature of the design and the material. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, with the seamless one-piece construction of the barrel with an appropriate amount of silicone grease, this would be a perfect pen to use as an eyedropper. Um, you'll see in the size comparisons, but the pocket version of this pen includes an O-ring on the section threads to assist with the eyedropping. Uh, it would have been nice to include that O-ring on this model as well. The Enso Japanese Ebonite pens are currently part of a Kickstarter campaign which is closing in just a couple of days after I'm posting this review. Uh, both sizes are selling for $79, which I feel is a reasonable price for what you receive with these pens. That $79 is a 40% savings off the future retail price of these pens. So if they are something you are considering, then it would be worthwhile backing the Kickstarter campaign before it closes rather than paying a higher price at a later point in time when these pens are available on the Inso site. Uh, Inso has done lots of Kickstarter campaigns and been successful at doing so. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, a writing sample, as well as a closer look at the interesting pocket version of this pen. Go with some size comparisons for the Inso Japanese Ebonite fountain pen. Uh, that is the regular size, and then here is the pocket size. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. In regard to a couple of other pens, uh, here it is with an Inso Italia, and then here it is with an Inso Piuma. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Conklin All-American and a Lamy All-Star. And then finally, here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. In regard to some pocket size pens, here it is with a, a Pocket Puma, and that is in the uh, brass. Uh, and then here it is with a Twisby Mini. Uh, here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport. And then something brand new from Shown Design, which is their small Ultim pen, otherwise known as Smaltum. Uh, this will be something that I review here in the very near future, but that's what it looks like in comparison to the Enso. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, um, this is what it looks like with the Lamy All-Star. And then here it is with the Enso Italia. And then in regard to the pocket, you unscrew the pocket. It just screws right on the end. And so this is what it looks like in comparison to the pocket. So I'm actually put it, actually let me put it up top. And you can see how the pocket is actually a larger size pen than the regular pen. And then in regard to the pocket pen, uh, here it is with the Twisby Mini. Let's go ahead and post these since that's how, for the most part, people are using these pens. Uh, and then here it is with the Caveco Skyline Sport. And then finally, here it is with that Shown Design Small Ultim, or Smoltum as it will be known. Uh, it's very comparable in size to the Enso. So let's take a quick look at the pocket version here. You can see that when it's capped, kind of looks like a little tube of lipstick. Um, it has some threads on the back. Um, I kind of like the fact that the rounded edge kind of hi helps hide the threads a little bit. Exposed threads on the back are always kind of something that bugged me a little bit. Uh, you can see here that it is rather short on its own. Um, the, it does accept standard international short cartridges, and then there's that O-ring in here, so this is something that's perfect to eyedropper. In fact, let's go ahead and eyedropper this now. And sometimes it takes a little while for a pen, once you've eyedroppered it, to uh, 
to actually kind of flow through. So let's eyedropper this and then uh, we could use it in the writing sample. This is just an eyedropper that I had right here. And let's go ahead. That's way too much ink that's not going to fit in here, but let's at least get that in there. No, we can fit a little bit more in there. There we go. I think that'll be good. So we're going to go ahead and seal this up. And then we'll see if that's right for us in just a minute. So here we go with the writing sample for the Enso. It's lowercase e with the accent over the e. And this is the Japanese Ebonite fountain pen. Now, I'm just guessing on this nib. One of my annoyances is that Bach, for the most part, doesn't put their nib size on the nib or they don't stamp it on there. Uh, and this, uh, that there was no marking on the box. So I'm guessing that this is a, a fine. That's my guess on this particular nib. And the ink that we're using is uh, one of my favorite blue black inks, which is Diamine 1864. Blue black. This is what the ink looks like. It's kind of on the darker side of blue black. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to a couple of other of my favorite blue blacks, which are Diamine Midnight, uh, as well as Bung Box 4B. This is what the bottle looks like. It's a nice little wedge here. Um, and if you have a number of these, then they kind of uh, go in a nice little circle. Uh, but it's a nice ink. It's one of my favorite blue blacks, like I said. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find that this Bach nib flows really nice. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation. You can get a little bit out of here. Um, if you press it a little bit hard. It has a decent amount of feedback to it. I'd say the ink flow is nice. We'll see how this turns out, but it feels like it's nice. Yes, it is. And in regard to some reverse writing. It's slightly scratchy, but it gets the job done. And then in regard to some fast writing. The stainless steel uh, nib as well as this feed keeps up just fine. And then here we have a look at the pocket pen and let's see what the nib is like on this pocket pen. Maybe a medium, maybe it's a fine, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's kind of on the medium fine size, but the, the nib writes very nicely. So there we have the Enso Japanese Ebonite fountain pen in both the regular and the pocket size. Uh, as I mentioned, the Kickstarter campaign is closing in just a couple of days. So if it's something that you're interested in, I would check that out and you can do so via the link below. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.